Imagine you're repeatedly betting on something you have an edge in, meaning your chance of winning is higher than chance itself, basically higher than 50%. If you risk too much, you will lose everything at some point. If you risk too little, your growth will be much slower than it could be, and you miss out on optimal returns. So what is the ideal bet to make to maximize the chance for long-term growth? The answer to this is the so-called Kelly criterion. And that's what we will look at in this video. So let's start all of that from scratch. Imagine you have a certain budget. Let's call it W0 in this case. Let's say you place a fraction F of that on a bet. The odds paid out are defined by B as the percentage of the bet you make. If you win, the new budget would be what is shown in green here. In case you lose, the red formula would apply. For the general case of repeated scenarios involving the same chance, defining our total runs by N and the amount of times we win by K, this combined formula would give us our net worth at the end of the day. To assure long-term growth, we want to maximize the logarithmic growth rate of this total win. So applying the logarithm on both sides and simplifying this equation a bit will give us the baseline for that. What we want to figure out though is the bet we should place on each individual step. Therefore, we take the average of that growth by dividing it by the number of total bets to make. And since we're looking at the long game here involving a big amount of bets, the whole formulation simplifies further to our equation for logarithmic growth. But how do we maximize this growth? Basic calculus tells us that we can do that by taking the derivative of this equation and setting it equal to zero. Using the chain rule for the logarithm, the first part ends up looking like this. And the second part doing the same, like this. Combining it back together gives us the full derivative of our growth rate. If we set it to zero, we can rearrange it to separate the f from the rest, which is the fraction, in this case the optimal fraction to place, given the other parameters like the chance of winning and our payout ratio. So what can we learn looking at the growth rate of different chances for the same b of 1 based on different betting fractions? If we take the chances of winning 80% and 60% for example, we see that the higher the chances of winning are, the higher the fraction is that you should place on a bet for an optimal outcome. What is also interesting to see though is that by crossing the x-axis, each of those chances have a different cutoff point after which you would lose everything you have long term. Lower winning chances come with an even lower limit for the fraction that you can get away with. Something that should have been clear to us from the beginning, but the mathematical visualization clears it up even more, is that winning chances lower than 50% in a repetitive scenario can never lead to a net positive outcome. The function's maximum within the actual applicable range is simply zero. The problem of reality is that the chances of winning are often unknown or just don't stay the same every time. But there are a few general things we can take away from that to make better decisions in everyday life. No matter if it's investing or general risk-based spending, career decisions, learning a new skill or hobby, or how to manage risk around spending your time in general. The overall message is, bet more when the odds are good, but not too much. Almost every decision in our life is a bet of some sort, and I hope that this concept will help you to approach those bets more rationally. Thank you for watching.